Well, good morning, everybody. It's good again to be here to have life, to be able to open up the Word of God, and to be able to see what the Word of God is saying. Um, I love the writings of Paul. I love how that Paul addresses different men. Um, Paul addressed Timothy. He called him young Timothy. He ad addressed Philemon and different ones. I mean, all through the scripture, you can go back and find different places where Paul wrote to these men. And I had flipped my Bible open to a verse that um, sometimes when you look at the first verse, when you open the Bible and you flip the Bible, you don't know where you're going. You don't know what verse you're going to see. It gives you where you have to meditate. It has, you have to like I say, I only opened the Bible five minutes. I've only read the verse maybe twice. But you have to go back and understand that this man, Paul, was writing to this gentleman here. His name was Titus. Now, you know, I don't know the age of Titus. I don't know how old he was. If he was older than Timothy, he could have very well been. Um, I haven't read the book of Titus in a long time, but the verse that I turned to was in um, Titus chapter 3. It's basically the closing out of the book that Paul wrote to Titus. So there was evidently maybe some words that he wanted Titus to be able to know. And as he's closing out, um, the book, he's getting close to the end. He's not actually at the end in this verse that I'm going to read. But this was the first verse that I saw when my eyes focused on the page was this verse. And to sit here and tell you that I have all knowledge and wisdom of this verse would be an outright lie. Um, I do depend on the Holy Spirit to give me the ability to talk about it. Um, my desire is to bring out truth and let people see the truth that is in the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? Why would Paul write to Titus and tell him this particular verse? If there wasn't a reason for Paul opening up and telling him, then this particular verse that I'm going to do today would really be of no count because Paul wouldn't have said it, but Paul did say it. it it's in Titus chapter 3 in verse number 9. Titus 3 and verse 9, he says in the very beginning, but avoid foolish questions. Well, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that love to ask questions that makes absolutely zero sense. Um, I think they're doing it primarily to try to see if they can belittle you into getting you off and running rabbits down their trail. And I have to be careful because every time I come out and make a video, I always, at the end, give my contact information, give my email, give everything about me, and then there's people that will actually comment and will actually ask the question that you know that they're setting you up. They don't agree with something that you've said, and I get that. 
And, I, and I'm certainly not no Bible whiz. I can tell you right now, there's a lot of stuff that I will never attain in my country-fied, country mind of mine that I will never be in college. I will never go to Bible school. I know how to read. I, I do know how to read real good, and I know how to look up words, and I know how to examine what the word says. He says here, but avoid foolish questions. Now, you know, if somebody has a legitimate question that needs an explanation, I will do my very best to give an answer to a person that has a question. Even if I feel like that they're running me in a rabbit hole, and what I mean by that is, it's just like what Paul was saying right here about the foolish question. You, you maybe will be set up to run a rabbit. And what I mean by that is you get away from the word of God and you try to start justifying your own ability, you might say. Well, I don't need to use my ability. I just need to use the spirit of God. When he says right here, but avoid foolish questions, he knows that Titus is going to be hounded with foolish questions, but to avoid them. That word avoid, to me, means to stay away from. If if there's a no trespassing sign, and I'm standing in front of the sign, and I'm thinking that I can go over beyond that trespassing sign and enter into that land, even though there's a non-trespassing sign, the word avoid means that when I see the sign, it's not wrong for me to look. You can't control the eyes of where you're looking, but you yourself, your flesh, is not allowed beyond that sign where it says no trespassing. And it says right here, but avoid foolish questions. Stay away from foolish questions, especially when you know that the questions is not going to be of any count to you. And then it goes on to say, and genealogies, talking about the past history of someone. A lot of times that people will bring up what their grandma did and what their mama did and what their grandpa did and what their great grandma did. Well... That's all well and good if they want to bring it up, but that doesn't mean that they're right. Grandma might have meant well, but Grandma might have been human, and she might would have made a mistake in something. And the reason he's saying and genealogies is don't get into that because it's what it calls here. We'll see the word when we get done. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions. What is contention? Strife. Contention. If, if, if I get into an argument with someone, that there would be a contention. I've been watching on YouTube some of these guys that will repo vehicles and how that anger gets into the person that is losing their vehicle and they'll just act all up in the air because they haven't paid payments in nine months trying to hide the vehicle for over a year and yet the bounty hunter comes and wants to repo the vehicle, but yet they're willing to fight tooth and nail to protect their vehicle that they don't even own. Ain't paid a payment on it in a long time. 
What am I saying? He says contentions. Did did Paul know that Titus would would go through contentions, strifes, aggravations? Oh, we could name many many words right here. Um, contention can be all sorts of contention. Sometimes contention can be physical. Sometimes contentions can be spiritual. Somebody will try to go and prove their point spiritually, but it don't hold water. People think that they can earn their way to heaven, but the Bible says you can't earn your way to heaven. And people don't like to hear that because it goes against their grain. It goes against on what mom and daddy and brother and sister taught 50 years ago that this is the way we always done it. And that's part of the problem. That's the reason he says don't get into genealogies, contentions, and striving about the law. I'm glad that Paul gave us his word in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 where we can't earn our salvation. And when you go and quote that verse to somebody, they will immediately know that you know your Bible in order to be able to quote that verse when the Bible says, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, a lot of churches want to try to hold a grip on you. I used to have a little a little football in here that it was one that was a real tiny one and you could use it to grip and mash it in and out. It was like a, it was like a, it was like a, a, a stretch of your fingers to be able to do it where it would have resistance. What is he saying right here? And striving about the law. People love to strive in the law because they think the law is going to get them into heaven. The law don't get you into heaven. That's the reason he says here, and and striving about the law, avoid. That word avoid means to stay away from the striving about the law. People want to bring up the law all the time. Oh, we got to honor the Sabbath. No, why don't we honor every day as the Sabbath? See, people will argue about, do we worship on Saturday? Do we worship on Sunday? What's wrong with worshiping every day? I come out here just about every day and bring a message. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody's going to listen to it. But I want to come out and bring something that is afresh something that my eyes look at for two minutes and look at a verse and see what Paul was meaning when he told Timothy but to avoid foolish questions, genealogies, and contentions and striving about the law. Did he feel like that Titus was going to get into any of these? Sure. That's the reason he's warning Titus. To avoid this, to avoid foolish questions and genealogies, people want to bring up their past. They love contention because they love to argue. I'm not going to argue about the Bible to nobody. I ain't going to do it. I ain't got time. I ain't got time for it. I'll help anybody that I can. If anybody is willing to listen, I'm willing to help, but I'm not going to go and arm wrestle somebody. I'm not going to go and and get into a contention with someone. If a person is willing to listen, they'll hear what you got to say. They might not agree with it, but they will at least hear what you got to say. He doesn't want me to strive about the law today. I'm not living under the law. 
I mean, I'm living under grace and mercy. Now, some people's going to go and say, well, ah, Ken, right there is your problem because you're not really honoring the law. You're honoring grace and mercy. Well, for by grace are ye saved through faith. For by grace. He didn't say, for by the law are ye saved. He said, for by grace. What is grace? Unmerited favor of God. But a lot of people feel like they're going to earn their heaven. And sad to say, they're going to find out that you can't earn a place that was free. You can't do it. So that's the reason he's telling Timothy here, avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and striving about the law. Listen now, for they are unprofitable and vain. For they, meaning the foolish questions, the genealogies, the contentions and striving, for they are unprofitable. It would be like me planting seed in concrete. Take a bag of concrete and I put it out in the weather and I put okra seed in that concrete, what's the likelihood that that okra is going to grow through that concrete when the mist, when the mist of the water hits it in the morning and it begins to suck up the mist and it begins to harden the surface of that concrete and it absorbs the moisture in the air and the concrete gets hard. What's the chance of that okra growing? That's what he's saying right here. For they are unprofitable, meaning the foolish questions are unprofitable. The genealogies are unprofitable. The contentions, and yes, the strivings about the law is unprofitable. They are unprofitable, and here's the ending word, in vain. We know what the word vain means. It means empty. If I come out here and I make a message and the message is vain, it's not going to do nobody no good. My advice in the closing minute that I've got here on the video today, don't worry about trying to argue with something that is unprofitable because it's going to end up in being vain. Now, can you help somebody? Can I help someone? Yeah. If they're willing to listen, that doesn't mean that I have all the answers. But what happens if I just give one or two answers that would make somebody think? Would it be wise for me to just give one or two answers of things that I happen to know? Like, for by grace are you saved through faith, but yet people think they can earn it. They think they can work for salvation. Oh, they love using that verse that we have to endure to the end. If you took that verse in context, you would be amazed in what that verse says and what it actually means. But people don't want to hear that because they love to endure this life because they think that that there is going to impress God. It's going to be impressive. God's got to love me because he is impressed with me. Let me tell you something. I didn't see this verse before I got out here. When I flipped the Bible open, I didn't know I was flipping it to Titus chapter 3. My eyes did not know that it was going to look at verse number 9. So why am I bringing this out for? I'll tell you why I'm bringing it out. Because there's people that are asking foolish questions. And it might be that they already know the question and they just trying to get a gotcha on you. They're asking about genealogies, which it really doesn't matter 
it really don't matter, and contentions. People love contention. Oh, they would love to get in an argument, and, and I w- sit there and watch, and, and it makes me mad knowing how foolish people really are when I'm watching them clips on vi- on video. I mean, I see the contention and the striving. But you know what? They strive about the Bible. They strive about what God's Word says because they don't understand it in the meaning of what the Bible actually is saying. You gotta, you gotta use the Bible in correct context. You can't just name and claim verses. You have to use it in the context. Just like I'm doing right now, Paul wrote to Titus and told him this verse right here. For they are unprofitable. All of them things that I called out up there is unprofitable and it's vain, meaning that it's empty. I don't want to live an empty life. I want to live a profitable life. I want to tell people the truth and let the chips fall where they may. And I hope that I've done that today. Make sure that you're not asking foolish questions. There's nothing wrong with questions. Just don't try to ask gotcha questions because it won't, it ain't going to produce nothing. Just remember, it's like planting okra in concrete. Just remember that. Elderly Ministry is how you contact me on uh, YouTube. Elderlyministry.com is the website. There's a link there that's got the email, got the cell number, got all of the contact information that you need. You can text me, you can reach out to me, leave me a message. Be glad to answer you back. If it's something that I feel like I can add, I will. I appreciate you watching. I hope that this has been beneficial. It's going to help me to not get into foolish questions myself. Thank you all for watching.